Hello everyone and welcome back to DSP vs. the Internet episode 66. We're still in Ultra Member submissions for now. We're gonna see how many we can get through in this third video. Uh, FYI, this next video, alright, is basically a fan-made montage of some of the best moments, or I guess personally one of their, some of their favorite moments, from my runs in Fallout. And it includes some of the biggest, like, funniest moments that people always bring up in my Fallout history, like the Naughty Nightwear and stuff like that. Um... The funny part about it is, it's fan-made. I know the person who made it, all right? They're an actual fan of my content. For some reason, my idiotic detractors have latched onto this video and be like, oh, don't you know that this is like a secret detractor video? No, it's not. This is someone who's trying to practice video editing and they wanted to do something and they actually consulted with me and says, is there anything that I could make to practice video editing? And I said, well, right now, Fallout's all the rage. Keep in mind, this was a few weeks ago. Right? I was like, Fallout's all the rage. I'm playing Fallout 4. People are talking about the Fallout TV show. Maybe a montage of stuff from Fallout would work. And they actually asked me, hey, what would be some things? And I suggested some moments that I remembered from the runs in Fallout. And I said, and just add some other moments too. So is it amateurish? I mean, it's an amateur video. This is not someone who does this for a living. This is not someone who is looking for professional recognition. They didn't even put their name on the video. They gave it to me and said, just put it on the channel. I'd like to see you know, some people watch my work, right? So that's what I mean. These people who are insane, tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists always make stuff up about stuff. It couldn't be further from the truth. This is a genuine fan video. Is it the best video ever made? No. Is it the worst video ever made? No, but it, it's a video to watch. It's something additional content for the channel, which I was happy to have an, an extra video to upload to the channel, right? So we'll watch a little bit of it. We're not gonna watch all of it. Okay, we'll just, we'll watch some of it. As you can see, they just grabbed a random video from like vlogging or something off of my channel as the intro from a recent thing. Why can't I just take them seriously? I just did an amazing fucking- And by the way, if you're, if you're wondering, cause some people were like, oh, there's only a left audio channel for the Fallout 3 clips. Yeah, cause the Fallout 3 clips are terrible quality. They're from the Dark Side Phil channel. The camera wasn't stereo audio. So I think what happened is this person took a, a mono audio video and didn't realize it was mono audio and put it into their editor. And then the other clips later on of my future Fallout playthroughs have stereo audio. It's just this one has mono because because uh, the, the quality of the clip is ancient. This is from 2008, this video. I can't take items here. Wow, kid. You look like you've got 10 pounds of words. By the way. Five pound box. <laughs> Why don't you take a load off and tell me about it? I would have put 10 pounds of lead into your five pound fucking brain. <laughs> Why was I so angry at 3Dog? Because I was drunk. Half the playthrough of Fallout 3, I was completely drunk. If you watch the playthrough, the playthrough is going live on DSP Throwback uh, every other day. I think we're about 20 parts into it right now. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, like uh, half the playthrough is like that. By the way, this is the original quality with the new remastered edition. This video is stretched to full widescreen and upgraded. It's still not amazing, but it looks way better than this, and the audio is completely fixed so that it's stereo and it sounds good. Okay? Horrible, horrible dialogue. <laughs> I'm drunk. That's why I'm drunk at this clip. I'm so upset at him for no reason. Here you go. Where you going, asshole? Huh? <laughs> Where you running? Don't look. <laughs> Get the fuck back over here, you bitch. <laughs> Can't catch him. The fuck did he go? Dude, he's getting away. I can't catch up to him. Look. And by the way, for those who haven't played Fallout 3, that's the maximum walk speed. You can't move any faster. So enemies who run legit, like, you can't catch them. They run away. I'm not over encumbered. I just cannot catch up to him. Wow. So I went to the radio building and look what I'm fucking finding already. An outright fire fight. Oh, this is the, uh, is this the and, behemoth uh, fight? The I think this is the super mutant behemoth fight outside of Galaxy News Radio. Oh, crap. Well, it doesn't do work. And I'll capitalize. <laughs> oh. See, and the funny part is, this used to be, like, very popular. These videos had a lot of views and stuff on my original Dark Side Phil channel. Look how bad it is. I can barely watch it. Like, now I'm watching the remastered version on DSP Throwback, and that's at least... Palatable, like you can watch it, 
but this is like so bad the quality right um anyway so you can watch this on the DSP throwback channel if you would like I think I don't know why someone submitted this video besides like I said people think it's some kind of a secret troll video it's not it's a legit video from a fan who likes my stuff and actually I consulted with them to recommend some moments like I said the naughty nightwear moment is in there there's the moment in Fallout 4 where I aggro the entire uh Diamond City that's all in there okay and by the way there's another one too made by another fan that was made like a week or two later and that one's also live on the channel so if you like Fallout DSP throwbacks the place to be right now there's a lot of Fallout content over there okay all right uh, let's see what's next. Failed fast food desserts. Welcome back. Fast food joints have a wide array of delicious. Well, let's see, the McDonald's McBakery. News. So the news that had nothing better to talk about anyway. The end of the McDonald's Bakery. For a few years, the bakery offered three fine piping hot items: the apple fritter, the blueberry muffin, and the cinnamon roll. The apple fritter was cinnamon-covered apples, fried and covered in a sugary glaze. And the cinnamon roll was drizzled with cream cheese icing and served warm. But in July that year, all three were suddenly discontinued. And a lot of people were not too happy with this news. Someone, please. Someone, please wake me up from this nightmare. No. I've done nothing to deserve this. Oh, hi, Nen. So this was recent. It's 2023. So this was just like, what, a year ago? I didn't even know that this ever existed. I mean... What did you really think would happen when you ha tried to have teenagers who work at McDonald's be bakers, right? Did you think the quality would be good or something, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. All right, let's go to a more interesting one. Well, we already know about the Grimace Shake. We are, that was just last year, too. Choco, oh, Choco Tacos? I used to eat Choco Tacos. I, I got those at Taco Bell before. Grimace shake trend to do. Yeah, I'm pretty weirded out too, pal. And for number eight, the Choco Tacos from Taco Bell. These were pretty good. Oh, I have no idea how this one didn't last. Yeah. It's like one of those choc tops you get at the movie theater, but taco shakes. Yeah, that's not exactly Bell's what it was. No with nuts. stranger to some sweet treats to go along with your burrito. They've got cinnamon twist, caramel apple pastry pockets, cookie sandwiches, and of course, the churro. A Spanish delicacy. But the ice cream company Klondike collaborated with Taco Bell to bring us these yeah. Choco Tacos. But sadly, they were discontinued in 2022. Much to the dis- Oh, 2022? They lasted a long time. I No lie, I didn't even know about Choco Taco. And then during my, my years in the mid-2000s when I was traveling to play Street Fighter, we stopped at a Taco Bell and uh, to eat on the road. And one of my friends says, oh, dude, you got to get a Choco Taco. I was like, what the hell is that? They're like, it's a freaking ice cream taco that they have here. I tried it. And I was like, this is actually pretty good. You know, it's from Klondike. So if you like a Klondike bar, you're going to like the Choco Taco. Wow. I wonder why it got discontinued. May of Twitter fans. But my big question is, how did they actually taste? They look great. Well, they're essentially vanilla ice cream in a sugar taco with milk chocolate coating. What did taste testers say? Well, good mythical morning chowed into this one. Let's see what they said. They called it complex and that's it there's a lot to experience many layers complex which doesn't tell us much so what <laughs> did other taste testers think the sweatpants taster compared it to drumstick ice cream. That's right Hi. that's exactly what it tastes like you ever had a drumstick that's what it is it's it's ice cream with chocolate in it and then with nuts so it's three flavors in one it's, it's pretty good love the combination of the cone ice cream the chocolate and peanuts all in one bite the drumstick wishes it could do this Oh, I miss that nutty chocolate fusion. It sounds delightful. You can understand why many Twitter fans are upset by it disappearing. But the ice cream company Salt and Straw recently announced they're making a new version of the chocolate taco, coming to their stores instead. So at least we'll have an option. Anyone here with the whole Salt and Straw is? I never even heard of it before, right? All right. Wait. Whoa, this is not number seven. It's skipped. Oh, it doesn't have the timestamp right. Okay, here we go. Seven, the Jack in the Box bacon oh, milkshake. Oh, come a on! Meat flavored milkshake. Oh, that's disgusting. Who in their right mind makes this? Do you remember the? Bacon? Listen, I do not understand the insane obsession with bacon. I don't. I like bacon. I'll eat bacon. Okay, 
in various things. I'll have it with breakfast. I'll have it on a burger or something. I don't want bacon in sweets. Chocolate-covered bacon. Dipping bacon into sweet things. I don't get it. I don't, I don't like it at all. Like, why do you need bacon in a milkshake? It doesn't even make sense. Bacon Sunday, the Sunday with bacony bits in it. Well, Jack in the Box saw this and said, "Hey, how can we make this even gross?" Exactly. Bacon Sundays just aren't outrageous enough. Both were made in 2012. I guess 2012 was a year of stupid food ideas. The new Kit Kat pops from Pizza Hut. <laughs> According to this Twitter post from Jack himself, it's sweet. what the fuck? Kit Kat pops from Pizza Hut. Pizza dough around a Kit Kat. What the fuck is wrong with people? Dude, they make the dumbest shit. And salty. I call it swalty. Jack, I hate to break it to you, good sir, but it looks as nightmarish as you. And the chains <laughs> certainly lack confidence in the item. As according to ABC News, the shake was a secret menu item. This bacon horror wasn't listed on any menus uh. at restaurants. In fact, the chain had so little confidence that it came with a disclaimer that the drink is, quote unquote, as limited as limited can be. <laughs> and when your drink comes out colored like century old lead paint, well, who can blame them? I found a taste test for the shake from many years ago in an old blog from the Impulsive Buy. According to their review, it's damn intriguing but also gross and I'm scared of it. Oh dear, I just gagged. It smells smoky. The smoky uh, probably comes from the shake's uh, bacon flavored syrup, because apparently that was a thing when they tried tasting it. It's not repulsive. Yay. <laughs> yeah, they're playing Sonic 3 music. The Chick-fil-A cheesecake. and smooth in texture. So clearly this cheesecake was missed by some people. According to MASH, this New York style cheesecake was pulled from Chick-fil-A in 2012. They claimed they wanted to make room for new desserts like cookies and brownies. You mean the shit that everyone else already has, right? I think it would have been more difficult to store cheesecake and serve it by the slice as well. I gotta say though, this cheesecake probably had the tiniest following of fans I've ever found on a fast food. I mean, even the bacon sundae is more missed Ugh. than this thing. Now, almost every discontinued fast food or snack has its own change.org petition. Because that's what change.org is for. Discontinued desserts. That's right. <laughs> but only a total of 23 fans actually wanted the Chick fil A 23. to come back. That's for the fan to decide. Yay! And to those 23 fans, my condolences. I think you should. Charles Jr. Ding Dong? Ding Dong ice cream? So what they do, they put ice cream inside of an actual Ding Dong you could just buy at the store? came up with a name back in 1967. Hostess Ding Dongs, you love them. But I just never pictured this small spherical goat turd called Ding Dong <laughs> to make an attractive dessert. <laughs> Supposedly, this one was inspired by the Carl's Jr. Strawberry Pop-Tart ice cream sandwich. What the fuck? I guess after they managed to sell that, they thought, hey, clearly we can sandwich an ice cream between anything. That's right. The result was... Well, I rarely see a dessert this blatantly fucking. Oh my god. Fact, originally, I put this ding dong sandwich on the thumbnail, but people kept going. Oh, that's so ugly. Put it away. Uh, I'm sorry. Here's a picture of a goat instead. The ding dong itself has been a staple American snack cake for decades now. Basically, a small, unsightly chocolate cake with a creamy, marshmallow-like filling. But hey, maybe it tastes better than it looks. Food Beast tried it. It's pretty darn tasty, but it's exactly what it sounds like. A ding-dong chocolate cake filled with ice cream. When I checked YouTube, the taste testing was approximately 50% ding-dong jokes. But for the other 50%... Wow. I like that it's got the softness of the ding-dong, but it's so messy. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? It's a, it's a soft cake. It's going to fall apart in your hands when you're trying to eat ice cream in it. Cupcake Sunday shake. I don't even want to see this. Cher McDonald's had cherry pie? Oh, wait. Well, it was, it was cherry in the pie that they currently sell uh, apple in? Enough. In order to be considered a cherry pie, cherry pies had to be at least 25% cherries. And, you know, that seems perfectly fair. 
but McDonald's was failing to manage to make their cherry pies even a quarter cherry. Uh, According to the Consumers Union report, some cherry pies did not even contain half a cherry. Oh, come on, Mackers. This is a new low even for you guys. But in reality, none of this was the true downfall of the sugary red coloring pie. You see, the original red pie was fried. And when McDonald's began baking their pies in the 90s, sales plummeted on the pies. <laughs> According to The Sun, one employee said, Cherry pies were very low turnover. You may like them, but when we only sell like 10 of them a day, it's tough to justify keeping them on the menu. Mm. And what's our delish number two choice? The Breeze from Dairy Queen. Ah, the 90s. We had Britney Spears, Aqua, Glow in the Dark Stars, Aqua. and Froyo. Oh my AKA god. Frozen yogurt. Back then, everything Fro -yo. had to be low yep. fat. Froyo was frozen huge. Frozen yogurt promised just that. In more recent years, society transitioned into a more low sugar craze. Yeah, that's true. Does anyone eat frozen yogurt anymore? I just realized that. I'm like, it was so huge back then. It was 90s and 2000s. Now, I do you even see any... Remember TCBY, the country's best yogurt? And then there was another one too. There was like two frozen yogurt chains. I don't even think they exist anymore, does it? I don't even know if you get frozen. Can you even get frozen yogurt at like the grocery store anymore? He's right. Now everything's low calorie or no calorie as opposed to yogurt instead of ice cream, right? Huh. Realizing that excessive sugar could be just as bad as excessive fats. Yeah. And I do like that consumers are offered more low sugar products. But I've no idea why the low calorie phase has never taken off the same way as the low sugar and low fat craze. Anyway, many years ago when Netflix just began, Ted Danson stated a truth about frozen yogurt that has stayed with me to this day. You know, from The Good Place and Becker, if you're old as me. What's really? It? There's TCBY near you, Gatsu Gatsu? Apparently it still exists. He says that it's he actually has one near him. Huh. Food that people think they enjoy, but that's also kind of a bummer. Frozen yogurt. Frozen yogurt has always been kind of a bummer to me, too. It's just okay, which means it's perfect. <laughs> the, it's just Okay, but years ago, Dairy Queen began to offer frozen yogurt, aka Breeze, as a healthier alternative to soft serve ice cream. I think I'm remembering and I this. I respect breeze. the idea of the Breeze. The Breeze was essentially a Dairy Queen blizzard, right. but with frozen yogurt instead of ice cream. And the Breeze only contained like 5% milk fat, as opposed to the usual 10 to 15% in most ice cream. Oh, low the fat. Breeze was even available with fruit on top. Sounds delish. And I do wish more low calorie options like this were offered to people in fast food chains. Not just the choice between a 700 calorie burger or a thousand calorie <laughs> burger. Unfortunately, fast food chains have just never managed to lower the calories in their supposed healthy items. Like, your typical fast food salad is more calories than a Big Mac. Yep. Might as well just enjoy the Big Mac. Anyway, because when fast food does seem to make a healthier option like the Breeze, they just can't seem to get people to enjoy the taste. And that's what happened here. People just didn't seem to like the taste of Breeze that much. It's Froyo. It's just... Okay, it seems like unless fast food joints lace their foods in salt, butter, and sugar, <laughs> most customers just can't taste any real flavor in them. So yeah, the Breeze tanked primarily because they just couldn't sell them. In so fact, I worked at a place, it was called Everything Yogurt and Salad Cafe, and I worked at that place from the second half of the 90s, ever since I was old enough to be employed, basically, which was 15 in Connecticut. I started working at 15. Uh, all the way through my early 20s, I only quit the job when I went to, to college full time. I still worked there at some I'm trying to remember exactly the timeline. I can't remember. I know at some point I did still work there, but I also was working at Circuit City. So it's confusing because I can't remember if I had two jobs or I was working at one and then the other. It's hard to remember. But anyway, I worked there for a long time, okay? In the late 90s, frozen yogurt was a fad. Much like the health craze, like salads, yogurt, everyone... Well, I had to eat that instead of the high calorie food. And there actually was a point where the big burger, greasy food was on a little bit of a downturn and the health food had a spike, okay? And the problem is with frozen yogurt, unlike ice cream, it actually is harder to take care of because there's active cultures in it, meaning there's live things in there that are supposed to help your digestion. But because of that, yogurt actually gives bad quicker and 
a lot of places don't care. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially when you're already spending more money because it's supposed to be a healthier ingredient. Same thing with the salads. A fresh chopped salad is harder to maintain and sell at a store than, say, a bunch of frozen burgers that you just thaw out and toss into the fryer, right? Or, you know, on the grill. It's just harder to... It's higher food costs and more expensive. So not only are you providing a product that is supposed to be healthier, but it doesn't taste as good as what people really want, the ice cream... But now a lot of places didn't keep it fresh either. You know, you know, you want the frozen yogurt. Why isn't it as tasty? Why is it? Why does it feel like a little bit more mushy, right? Or why does it have that weird taste to it? Oh, because it it, it spoiled fast and you didn't realize it. So you didn't clean the machine and change it out. Now when someone a customer tells you that, it's like, oh, it tastes bad. Like, oh shit. Well, whole machine's down for the day. I got to do a thorough cleaning of it. This is gonna take me like two hours now because did you had to run all the fucking cleaning solution and water through it and shit to clean it completely out. You had to open a new bag of the yogurt solution, have that freeze. It took forever. So I get it. Like everyone wants health, but people, what really people want is they still want the flavor. They just want it so that they think that they're not killing themselves doing it. But I just find that hilarious because he's right. When I used to work at the salad place, people would come and say, I want a salad. All right. What do you want? The small or the large? I'll take the large. All right. What kind of salad do you want? Well, I'm eating healthy. So give me the chef salad that has turkey, ham, and cheese in it. Also add some egg in there too. Lettuce, tomato, and all the veggies. But I want croutons. And also give me that chunky blue cheese dressing or the Parmesan peppercorn dressing. And it blah, 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 thick ass shit in there. You're like, dude, that salad I just made is probably like 1,200 calories. You could have went to McDonald's over there and gotten the Big Mac meal and that would have been like a thousand calories. So you you think you're, you fool yourself into eating. You think it's healthy, but you get the most unhealthy thing. And then I, I always said this, the funniest part, they would always order the diet Pepsi with it. They have to have a diet Pepsi with their insane 1200 calorie gooey salad, you know? So I'm not surprised to hear that they tried a, a, a yogurt item at Dairy Queen and didn't work. All right, let's see what the top one is. Sales on the breeze were so low that their stored frozen yogurt oh. kept spoiling. Yep. And despite those sales, they tried to offer it for a long time. Ten years, in fact. And good on Dairy Queen for trying to offer a healthier dessert option for that long. And before number one, what are our honorable mentions? The Bacon Sunday oh. from Burger King. Since I talked about this thing in the stupidest fast foods, I left it off the list. But there are a surprising amount of fans to the Bacon Sunday. Some people commented they seem to like the sweet, fatty, so and salty disgusting. combination. People are weird, That's man. supposedly the flavor they got when they put bacon and ice cream together. And it's worth pointing out that some people pushed this myth of fast food ice cream containing pig fat for a long time. <laughs> But this is a case where ice cream actually contains pig fat because they're literally sprinkling pig fat on top yeah. of the sundae. The Fruit Loops milkshake from Burger oh, King. Oh, I remember that. Burger King coarsely chopped up some Fruit Loops and stuffed them in a soft serve shake with sweet sauce and whipped cream. Boom, nostalgic overload. And possibly blood sugar over. Duh. I like the way junk banter described the taste of this one. The second sip is a comforting, familiar flavor that tastes like a Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> Pizza Hut Hershey Dunkers. Huh, what a strange look. Oh it's my god. Pizza Hut breadsticks with what looks Come like on. Cocoa Krispies, aka Cocoa Pops, with mixed nuts on the top. As to why these ones were discontinued, it's hard to say. But according to a staff member on Reddit, and they probably didn't sell well. I remember I made less than five of them. A customer commented they were only good straight out of the oven, but after only 10 minutes, they were rock hard and gross. Yeah, personally, makes it sense. a little too sweet for my taste. That, that makes a lot of sense. Why, why would it be good? If it's out of the oven, it's fresh, but immediately all that hard topping is not going to be crispy and crunchy. It's going to be like, it's going to harden and become like a rock. You're right. That was an idiotic product. The Unicorn Frappuccino from Starbucks. Oh, I so wanted to include this beautifully colored drink in the list. Look at this gorgeous thing. Oh my thing. god. My thumbnail was inspired by just this rainbow effect. Unfortunately, the unicorn frappuccino was one of Starbucks' worst received frappuccinos. So what went wrong? Well, the unicorn was made out of ice, milk, 
pink powder, sour what the blue fuck is powder, pink powder, cream frappuccino syrup, mango syrup, and blue drizzle. And after this massive cocktail of combinations was released, it was panned by health critics. Uh -huh. Health experts didn't like that it had 500 calories and 76 wow. grams of sugar. But honestly, to me, that doesn't sound like that much for a frappuccino. I thought frappuccinos were meant to be sugary and unhealthy. Frappuccinos aren't exactly made for health enthusiasts. <laughs> it was quickly apparent Ooh. that the drink was made more for Instagram photos than actual drinking, as one hit of this thing would keep some people up for a week. And with that, on to number one. And for our number right, what one, is number one? Dessert, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup McFlurry from McDonald's. Oh. When it comes to McDonald's- This is weird because there's a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Blizzard at Burger King, at Burger King, excuse me, at Dairy Queen, and it's very popular. People love that. It's always been a staple since like the 1990s. So why did the, the peanut butter cup McFlurry fail? Hmm. I think there's three ranking tiers of indulgence. Tier one of indulgence is the simple vanilla soft serve. Tier two is a sundae made with some nice caramel or chocolate syrup. Tier three of ultimate dessert indulgence is the McFlurry. 803 calories oh my of God. pure, undiluted sweetness. So why not make it an even sweeter indulgence and sprinkle some peanut butter cups on top? Personally, I wouldn't sleep that night. The recipe for this one was pretty straightforward. Soft serve ice cream mixed with broken up pieces of peanut butter cups, mixed in that traditional McFlurry style. This thing was the real deal. This short-lived wonder was considered the ultimate McFlurry flavor for so many people. Mm. Delish.com even ranked it as the number what? one best McFlurry flavor of all time, wow. according to them. It's distinctly creamy meats flurry peanut butter. When spread through a soft serve, it reaches new heights of deliciousness. Good vanilla, very sweet. Strangely, this McFlurry seems to appear sporadically across countries. For, for the record, Mc, uh, if you haven't been to McDonald's and had their vanilla ice cream, it doesn't taste anything like vanilla ice cream. It tastes like pure sugar. I don't know what they do to their soft serve. I don't even know if it's considered ice cream because at one point, McDonald's many years ago, this is actually in the movie The Founder, if you ever see it, <clears throat> uh, when when basically all the food decisions weren't being made by the, by the owners, the McDonald's guys anymore, but it was actually this other guy, this salesman who's played by Michael Keaton in the movie, they decided to convert from actual dairy product ice cream to this powdered substitute that was insanely cheap to make, but you could blend it in a way that would fluff up and kind of be like ice cream. So they would say, oh, that's a milkshake, but it wasn't a shake. In fact, they were legally said, uh, told they couldn't call it a milkshake anymore because it didn't actually contain enough dairy to be considered a milkshake. So Ray Kroc, that was his name? Okay, thank you. So. I don't know what they do with their ice cream or if it even can be called ice cream. Maybe it's called soft serve, but they don't say ice cream. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't taste anything like ice cream. It literally tastes like sugar. Like you're just eating gooey sugar. You know, it's not good. It's disgusting. I, there was one time years ago, my wife and I were craving ice cream. Everything else around here was closed. So the only thing we could get was a McFlurry. And we're like, all right, we'll just do it. We went, I went, I bought them. I drove home. We went, just like this, we were like, oh, it was, just, it's too so sweet. I don't even think an adult can like that. Like maybe a kid would eat it, but I don't think an adult can like it. It has too much fucking sugar in it. I, the whole idea of ice cream is not supposed to be just sugar. It's supposed to have actual milk and cream and dairy flavor in it. And McDonald's ice cream doesn't have that. So the idea that you're going to mix a sweet peanut butter cup in with that is probably a bad idea. According to this comment, it appeared in Dubai briefly back in 2023. Huh. It also appeared briefly in my country, Australia, in 2019. Back in 2012, it appeared and disappeared like a ninja nah. in the USA. It even appeared in South Korea in 2016, selling at 2,701. Unfortunately, despite it being such a huge hit, I cannot find any reason on the web why it just keeps disappearing across countries. Given it's more loved than the Oreo or M&M's flavor, my guessing is it might be a licensing issue with Reese's. But that hasn't stopped fans from rallying to get it back. Like the McRib, the Reese's <laughs> McFlurry was a huge hit. Facebook groups and Twitter- Well, it's like I said, Reese's, you can get Reese's right now at Dairy Queen, which is a, another fast food chain in the United States, and you can do the Blizzard I think it's peanut butter cup or so they have Reese's Pieces as well which is the little candies with peanut butter in them you can do either 
So maybe Reese's does have this agreement with Dairy Queen, and then they have these limited agreements with McDonald's. They go back and do it from time to time, perhaps. But I think it's funny. He says it's one of the worst failures. Why is he saying it's a failure? It's not. It's weird that he says this is a failure when it says like everyone likes it. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> thank you guys. So far, great show. We're halfway through. We still got three more parts. Looks like we have three more Ultra Member submissions. I don't think they're very long. And then we're going to get to the submissions tier videos for the week. So thanks, guys, so far. Good variety of stuff. I'm enjoying the show. I hope you are, too. And I'll see you in part four.